Hello, I'm Philomen Probert. I'm one of the tutors on the JACT Greek Summer School. I'm often asked, how do we know how ancient languages were pronounced? Or even, can we actually know how ancient languages were pronounced? And the short answer is, it depends, because it all depends what kinds of information we're lucky enough to have. What I'd like to do in this lecture is to think about a few kinds of information which can be helpful when we're lucky enough to have them. And I'd like to do this by way of a thought experiment. Imagine that we're living 2000 years in the future. English is an ancient language and we're interested in how it was pronounced. No recordings have survived because there was a big IT failure in 3031. But some old books and old documents have survived and some printouts from something called the Internet. And we know from those materials that their writing system looked like this. And we can have a rough first guess at the sound values that some of those letters might have had because we're still using some of those letters in writing systems that we're using to write our modern languages today. But the sound values that these letters have when they're used for modern languages can only be a first approximation to the sound values that they might have had in an ancient language but it's good to have a starting point to start thinking. But we'd like to pin down some of the details when we get particularly interested in the name of this English city. It looks like Worcester or Worcester or something like that, but how is this word actually pronounced? Well, one of the documents that survives is a copy of a local paper from the city itself from 2010, and it's got in it a picture of a political campaign poster. It was delivered to every household in the city and the reason it gets into the paper is that the name of the city is misspelt. It's been spelt with O-R instead of E-R at the end. It's been misspelt twice on this poster and that's why we've got this red circle and red line drawing attention to those misspellings. So this candidate gets egg on his face for misspelling the name of the city where he's campaigning for office. Although he says it was the printers who made the mistake and that this kind of thing does happen. Now that comment that this kind of thing does happen is quite interesting for us because it suggests that the name of the city is genuinely not that easy to spell. And that might be telling us something about the pronunciation. And in particular, it might be telling us something about the pronunciation of this vowel, the one that's been misspelled. Is that being pronounced in a way that makes it not particularly obvious which letter it should be written with. Another copy of the local paper survives from a few years later, and this one's got a story about somebody who apparently mispronounces the name of the city. This is a senior politician being interviewed on the radio, and he apparently mispronounces the name of the city. His spokesperson says, of course, he knows how the word is pronounced. This is just the sort of thing that happens when you're speaking um, live on the radio. The Member of Parliament for Worcester itself says this is appalling. It's extraordinary, he says, for a party that claims to be interested in the city to be getting this kind of thing wrong. There is a serious side to this. It shows that they continue to be a metropolitan party focused on the big cities rather than places like Worcester. Incidentally, the Member of Parliament who's quoted saying this is the same one who a few years previously had the campaign poster with the misspelling. 2000 years in the future, we're not that interested in the political wrangles of the early 21st century, but what does interest us is that the city name is apparently difficult to spell and also difficult to pronounce because that suggests that the relationship between the spelling and the pronunciation is not at all straightforward. The pronunciation seems to be not a very good guide to the spelling, and the spelling is also not a good guide to the pronunciation. But none of this tells us that much about how the word was actually pronounced. So looking around for anything that might get us a bit closer, we come across something that appears to be a joke. This is from an American newspaper, this time from a column by someone called Dave Barry. He's writing about England and he says this about a trip to England 
that he made. Now, we can work out that this is a joke because Dave Barry is a humour columnist. Jokes is what he does. And we can probably work out that it's some sort of joke about how difficult it is to pronounce the names of English cities that have got something like Chester or Sester or something that looks like that in the middle. But we have difficulty getting the details of the joke here because we haven't got quite enough background information. Ideally, we'd already know how all these things are pronounced in order to get the joke that's going on here. And that's quite a common problem with ancient jokes. We also find a poem and we know that this is a limerick because we know that it was an entry to a limerick contest. And this is interesting because we know the rules for constructing limericks. We know that something at the end of the first line should rhyme with something at the end of the second line and with something at the end of the last line. And that suggests that the city name might rhyme with the word rooster. We've got to be a bit careful because we know that rhymes are not always perfect in limericks, but the city name rhymes with rooster or almost rhymes with rooster and it ought to rhyme with this as well. Now this is a creative spelling of the phrase used to. 2000 years in the future we're not quite sure if that's what it is and if it is a creative spelling exactly what are we supposed to make of it? Why is the word to being spelt like that? Or is it just a typing mistake? Did somebody just mistype the word at the end? There's a bit of debate about that going on, but either way, it's interesting that this city name and the word rooster are being rhymed with the phrase used to at all, because that might tell us something about the pronunciation of one or another of these expressions. In fact, it might possibly give us a hint that the R at the end of the city name and the R at the end of rooster are not being pronounced, or that at least some English speakers are not pronouncing that letter R. We also find some more serious publications that give us some hints. We find a Greek publication in which the name of the city is spelt both in the Roman alphabet and then transcribed into the Greek alphabet. The research we've been doing on the pronunciation of the Greek language of the 21st century suggests that this is something like Huster, Huster. And that might suggest, again, that the city name is being pronounced as two syllables. And that's a suspicion we already had when it came to the city name rhyming or almost rhyming with Rooster and Euster. We find a travel guide in which the word is said to be pronounced like rooster. Pronounced like is a rather vague expression, but we already saw, again, reasons for suspecting that the city name might actually rhyme with the word rooster. And then we find a work on the English language which says explicitly some people rhyme Worcester with rooster. Rooster. More commonly, though, the first vowel is pronounced like the double O in wood. Now that clues us in that double O is not always pronounced the same way as itself in different English words. And that's worth knowing, although we have difficulty being sure what the details are here. This also clues us in that not everybody pronounces the name of the city in quite the same way as everybody else. Now there's an extra complication when it comes to the publications we've just been looking at here because there's more than one place in the English speaking world with a name which is written like this. In fact this Greek publication is talking not about Worcester in England but about Worcester, Massachusetts. Worcester is Massachusetts. The travel guide is talking about another Worcester in North America, Worcester in Maryland, and the work on the English language is talking about Worcester in England, but it's talking specifically about the pronunciation of that word in Canadian English. There's no guarantee that the word was pronounced the same way when it stood for different cities. And 
This publication clues us in that there's no guarantee that every English speaker pronounced the word in the same way, even when they were talking about the same city. We can't pin down all of those details with the evidence that we've got, but what we've been able to do is establish that the city name was pronounced something like Worcester or Worcester. It was two syllables and this last vowel was pronounced in some sort of indistinct way and the R at the end was probably left off in pronunciation by at least some English speakers. So coming back to our original question, can we know how an ancient language was pronounced? The answer, I think, in this case has to be yes, within limits, within limits, we can know how this ancient language was pronounced by putting together clues from a number of different sources. Clues from the spelling and spelling mistakes can be particularly valuable. Jokes, parodies and attacks, which have something to do with the pronunciation of the word. Poetry can be helpful when we've got poetry that's constructed on principles that we understand and that requires words to sound similar to other words or requires a certain number of syllables in the line or something like that. When a word from one language is transcribed into a script that's being used for another language, that can be helpful as long as we've got some information on how that other language was pronounced, but that can help us because it helps us to put together different pieces of information that we might have. And finally, we might have some ancient descriptions, some people who are explicitly telling us something about the pronunciation of the word. If you're interested in how any of this might apply to the pronunciation of ancient Greek, I'd like to recommend a lovely book by W.S. Allen, Wilkes Greika. And if you're interested in more resources on ancient Greek, then do take a look at the Summer Schools website. Thank you.